It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another edition of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment commentary and breakdowns. Before we get started with the show, I want to give a major shout out to Miss Jennifer Martin for the uh, cash app that she sent the other day. I had a bunch of lives over the weekend. I believe that I actually shouted you out, but since you reached out and had not heard it, I want to make sure that you get that. So big shout out to Jennifer Martin. We're going to play Lotto for you in just a second, and then we're going to get into today's Let's Talk conversation. All right, let's get that started. One, two, one, two, three, eight. Ooh, ooh, yeah. When I done came up out the bottom. Say, ooh, ooh, yeah. Got fresh like I just hit the lotto. Say, ooh, ooh, yeah. yeah. They say money can't fix all your problems. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Well, I say throw it in my wallet. Say, ooh, 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 yeah. When I done came up out the bottom. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Got fresh like I just hit the lotto. Ooh, ooh, yeah. They say money can't fix all your problems. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Once again, for everybody tuned in, you don't have to make any sort of financial contribution to the channel, but anytime you do, you're always going to get your shout outs. You're always going to get your lotto play over here inside the industry with Jay Nolan. We greatly appreciate your pledges to the support of the channel. All right. Now, as y'all can see here, we have Young Miami and JT. They have two separate things going on. We're going to address those in just a minute. Nicki Minaj here is going to be spoken about by proxy. Not that I have anything specific about her in the news, but unfortunately, the Young Miami situation ties into that. We're also going to be talking about Jared Carmichael and his tasteless joke that he put in his show um, and how he's responding to it. And then we also have Gunna. Uh, he's got a new interview with Double XL where he talks about his future upcoming album uh relationship with other rappers in the industry how everybody's been treating him or been receptive to him if they have or not so we're gonna get into all of those things we're gonna start out with young miami now she's in a bit of a little bit of a pickle i might say because she got outed today for liking a shady post now as i mentioned this deals with Nicki minaj so the reporter megan kniff who became a voice in hip hop media throughout the Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez case. Uh, she put out this tweet talking about Nikki's husband, Kenneth Petty, and how he's asking for federal clearance to travel internationally so that he could go overseas with Nikki for the remainder of the Pink Friday 2 tour. It says, new tonight, Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty, is asking a federal judge for permission to travel internationally for the Pink Friday 2 world tour. He's currently on probation out of Los Angeles federal court for failing to register as a sex offender. In this uh, request, it says defendant Kenneth Petty, by and through counsel, hereby applies to the court for an order allowing him to travel out of the country with his family for his wife's tour and her professional purposes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Petty and Mrs. Petty believe he is necessary to accompany the family on the tour for various purposes, including child care. The anticipated travel schedule begins on April 17th, which is tomorrow, and continues periodically to July 14th, 2024. The travel schedule calls for travel to several countries, including Canada, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, France, UK, Austria, Ireland, Switzerland, and Romania. The government has been notified about this application and takes no position. Mr. Petty's probation officer has been noted of this application and has no objection to the travel request uh, dated April 15th. 2024 so i don't know i think some people were uh i guess a little confused on this they saw that he was filing for the ability to travel i think some people felt like he may have gotten denied but as far as i can see here it says his probation officer has been notified has been notified of the application and does not object right it says notable that Petty's lawyer tried to file the travel request, which is not opposed by the U.S. Attorney's Office under seal. But U.S. District Judge Michael Fitzgerald rejected him. Oh, wow. Hold on. Megan then updates again and says, correction, it's not that prosecutors aren't opposing the travel request. It's that they're taking no position. It's Petty's probation officer who doesn't oppose. Here's the declaration from Petty's lawyer. So... I don't know. I don't know if he's cleared to travel. I don't know if he waited too late for them to clear him. No, she actually updated a few minutes ago and says, good news for Nikki. Her husband is now legally authorized to accompany her on Pink Friday to World Tour. 
Judge Michael Fitzgerald in Los Angeles signed the travel order today, who was on federal probation for failing to register as a sex offender. So up until this point, a lot of people were celebrating because they thought he wasn't going to be able to go. Uh, there was a, a post on Twitter that said, Megan, stay winning. Basically, Megan the Stallion, who, of course, has been embattled with Nikki in a back and forth. Um, we'll see if that feud continues as they release new music. We do know that Megan has an album due out this year. Not sure when that will be. She's currently about to start tour uh, very soon. But people were under the impression that Kenneth was not going to be cleared to travel with Nikki. Uh, somebody said Megan stay winning. And it looked like Young Miami actually liked the post that said Megan stay winning. So she ended up getting thrown into this battle or this beef between Megan and and Nikki, when she had absolutely nothing to do with it, right? So she comes out and tries to defend herself. She says, I am a grown-ass lady with two kids and don't have time to be inserting myself in anything that has nothing to do with me. I don't have a problem with anyone. Please leave me alone. Every day I wake up on this app is something new. I am tired. You should have woke up and not liked some shit that you knew was going to get you in trouble. How long you been on motherfucking Twitter, Miami? Carisha. How long you been out here on Twitter? How long you been using it? Because the shit done got y'all in stitches a lot of times. Huh. She says, I'm on here to promote my shit and keep moving. <laughs> Don't tell me you got a uh, Victoria Monet situation. It was your assistant. It was your social media manager that liked the shit. We, on, we only going to let somebody get that off once this month. So let us know. let us know how you want to handle that. All right. <laughs> In other young Miami news, uh, there's a young lady out there that dissed the shit out of. Uh, I want to say dissed the shit, but I guess you can say dissed the shit out of her a couple days ago for uh, her "Can't Fuck with Me" song. Right? She said, "I go live right now without a motherfucking filter or some shit like that." And there was a young rapper. What was that girl name? Deja Dawes, she's from Ohio, whack as shit, by the way, if I might add, uh, terrible rapper, right, she dissed her, she got on live uh, last week talking about how she felt like uh, Young Miami stole her bar, put it in her song and turned it into this whole thing, right, she said, pull up to my hood, I bet you won't pull up, this, that, and the third, Young Miami tried to reason with this young lady and say, hey, I'm not gonna pull up to your hood, but please don't get it confused, I'm from the hood. I just recently got out the hood. I did not steal nothing from your song, but if you feel like somebody is inspired by your work, then you should be flattered, right? She took the high road and really didn't go in on this young lady. However, the response that she gave was not adequate enough. So Miss Deja Daw now has a new record out dissing Young Miami all over, right? The song is called Carisha Please. Now, I'm going to warn y'all, this shit is worse than the first one, okay? I'm only going to play it because it's entertaining to me. <laughs> whack raps get a lot of, I mean, I love hearing a whack rapper. It makes me feel so much better about myself knowing that there's people walking this earth that are just ass, you know? I'm going to be honest. So, let's go ahead and play Deja Doll and her delusion and see what she has to say in this record. Now, shit is loud, so let me go ahead and adjust some things on my end before we play it, all right? Let me uh, turn this shit down a little bit. Cool. Risha, please stop capping. Risha, please stop acting. At this point, stop rapping. Risha, please get new writers. Because why the fuck your rich ass inspired by my broke ass? Risha, please keep it real. This is really part of the distraction for that. Ooh. This is all part of the distraction from that Diddy deal. How I'm broke as fuck, but worth a meal. Bitch is trying to eat up off my plate like I missed a meal. Bitch, I got my foot in the dough. Risha, please tell me how much you pay baller. Risha, please tell me how much you pay baller. Ignore that pose. Bitch is trying to sweep it under the rug, but I'ma let them know. When bitches start flopping, that's when they gon' start dropping. Your career going out of Dre, why JT sharting? You was being a sex worker, I thought you was an artist. Getting pissed on ain't work, so now you got a copy. Risha, please, I'm a real bad bitch and you can't fuck with me. The dick 
make you bitches be sucking, not bite off. I'm a complain Jane Farber knockoffs. Broke bitch that all the rich hoes be biting off. Risha, please tell these people you be stealing sauce. Risha, Risha, please stop capping. I go live right now. Absolute garbage, you know? But <laughs> she addressed the sex worker allegations. She say, how I'm broken, I'm worth the meal. I call cap on that. She say, I'm the broke bitch. Riches, rich bitches be biting off. Please tell the world how you be stealing sauce. Oh, man. Shout out to Deja Dog. This is probably going to be the one and only time you get mentioned by all of these people. So I hope that you're making plans to capitalize off of this. Does not matter how many off the radar or, yeah, off the radar freestyles you do. Until you learn how to get on the beat, it sounds like you're literally swimming in a pool full of liquor that used to be the beat. Like, you're drowning. You are, you are flailing. You are literally out of breath. But we wish you all the best in your musical endeavors, and I hope you hire a ghostwriter one of these days, okay? Nonetheless, Deja Doll is on motherfucking Young Miami's neck. It doesn't seem like she's going to let up anytime soon. We'll see if Young Miami decides to uh, respond to any of this fodder going on. Probably not. But in other City Girls news, we've got JT. She's she's going up. You know what I mean? Her new album, I, 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 see, the, I see the madness here. She's been calling herself the uh, City Cinderella. For the past few weeks, it looks like that is the name of an EP or album that's coming. And she's in the process of releasing a new single called OK that will be out very soon. And I got to be honest with y'all. I told you, if she puts up some music that I fuck with, I'm going to give her positive reviews. The snippet sounds pretty hard. You know, if y'all listen to my Southside Nolan album, y'all know I am a sucker for that old school, early 2000s. Southern trap rap. I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about that Gucci shit. I'm talking about Jeezy, Tip, you know, early shit. I know Gucci was part of that wave, but I'm not really a big fan of WAP. I'm be honest. I like lyricists. Um, so this kind of put me in that space. I don't know if she got Shouty Red to produce this or who, but they definitely put me in that vibe. Hopefully I don't get copyright claimed on this, but if they do, <laughs> it's going to get cut the fuck out. You feel me? Let's hear what JT had to say in this new record. That shit was tough. I can't even lie to y'all. I'm not here to be no hater. I'm not here to downplay nobody. To be perfectly honest, if everybody put out good music and goddamn just had good shit going on in their lives, I don't even know if there would be a need for this channel. You know what I mean? Not to say that I'm here to downplay and talk down on people, but if everything was positive in the world... <laughs> Who's, who's looking for good commentary all day, every day? You know what I mean? So big shout out to the girl JT. Um, I guess the project City Cinderella will be sometime on the way. I know there's at least one song on there that I'm going to like. I'm a, I, I fuck with this record. I don't care for no bars. Definitely didn't care for Sideways. Sideways has picked up a following of fans. So shout out to everybody that likes that. To be honest, I feel like this track is a perfect song to pull up to the cookout with you know what i mean and i'm not even trying to be funny i'm just pulling satirical shit together because it it works <laughs> and you know what i mean pull up to the cookout with this shit and you better be in a chevy on 24s like candy paint shit it puts me in that mind state i'm not mad at that jt uh you might convert me to into a fan you know what i mean so shout out to her. The record sounds good. I'm looking forward to the official drop. I will be adding that to my personal playlist when it comes out. And we'll go through the lyrics when it drops. Why not? I mean, she's already a subject on an Inside the Industry show. We might as well keep it going. You know what I mean? You, you fighting back. And that's what I like to see. People that go through adversity and are able to fight back, find a positive, and able to, you know, continue to grow. Don't stay stagnant in your mess. You know, still got to get that attitude in check, not on some black girl attitude shit, but just on some industry attitude shit. Nobody wants to deal with somebody who's always mad. Um, So we got them out of the way. Next up, we got Gunna. All right. We're going to talk about Gunna's recent interview with Double XL. They had some pretty good questions for him. I'm not really a big fan of Double XL. 
these days. I grew up loving Double XL, so it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, gotta be honest, man. It's disheartening that I can't fuck with y'all these days, cause y'all was y'all was going in a good direction and then just gave up. I hate that shit. Y'all pick some of the worst niggas on the planet to be your freshman, ten. It's just crazy, man. So starting out the interview with Gunna, they ask him about his weight loss and health. They say, uh, how much weight did you lose? He says, maybe about 30, 40 pounds. How did that happen? He says, less eating, especially when I went to jail. Lost a lot of weight, just like cleansing, detoxing. When I got home, I started working out and keeping fit. And now I'm on a year straight of all working out. They asked if he was into working out prior to getting locked up. He said he tried for a second, but then he stopped. Just wasn't committed to it. Right. He also admits that he has a personal trainer now. He works out six days a week, eats better, eats clean. And that's something that he's disciplining himself to do every day. So for those of y'all that have noticed, uh, you know, Gunna has been kind of glowing up. His skin looks really clear. He's gotten himself pretty fit. Um, got a little tone where he used to be a more heavy set. Heft, I ain't going to say hefty, but a little husky. You know what I mean? Now he's changed that up. They say, so there's a new you, new music, new body, new everything. Is it about putting the past behind you and making this whole fresh version of you? Or is it just physical and your mind state also? He says, I think it's more like it speaks for yourself. It's self-explanatory. You see the growth. You see me evolving as an artist, and that's what I'm doing, just evolving. He said, they ask him, what does it mean to evolve? He says, as I evolve, my music evolves too. I'm not the same 24-year-old that was putting out Drip Season 3. Now I'm 30, and I'm dropping bittersweet and a gift and a curse. That resonates with how I'm living. Back then, it did too, but that was for that time. So this time, I'm just evolving differently, but it transpired over to the music too. They ask him if he's had a lot of life lessons since getting into the music industry. He says, I'm getting life lessons anyway, whether it was in the music or if I was cutting hair, I feel like I would be getting life lessons regardless. So he's kind of keeping quiet on certain things, right? They say you've had a lot going on. The case you are involved with currently has a trial going and you can't really talk much because it's ongoing. But to touch on the whole thing and a bit of what happened with you, how did your legal problems and the jail bid um, throw you off your career? He says it did a lot. It had a real big effect on my career as far as like shows, schedules, impact of everything. We had planned for rollouts, albums. Had a lot of effect on that just because everything being so high profile, but it's like it's still going. So I'm in motion of everything currently. You get locked up, you lose deals, lose business, lose people and lost support. He says, yes. They say, so you're fighting on one side and fighting for your business and your livelihood on the other. What did that do to you? He says, still fighting. We got to live in the moment. I can't stop and I'm not stopping. They ask, what's his relationship with Young Thug? He says, it's the same. It's love always. Our relationship is our relationship. And for those that don't know, Young Thug's father has been very adamant about not being hard on Gunna. He says Gunna did not snitch and niggas in Atlanta need to get off his back. But that hasn't changed the overall consensus of what people, especially in hip hop, feel about him. They ask about uh, people like Lil Durk, 21 Savage, and Lil Baby, among others, have either commented about you being a snitch or alluded to it in songs or in social media posts. Many people in media outlets have speculated that you aren't cool with those people anymore. What's your response to that? Are you cool with them or not anymore? He says none of those rappers, they not on the case. They don't know what's legally going on. So he's basically saying none of them niggas you named are even concerned with any of this shit y'all jumping into some shit that ain't got nothing to do with y'all y'all not going through this shit on a day-to-day -day basis y'all didn't sit in jail for this shit y'all didn't have y'all name wrapped up in this shit so please don't speak on me so that's without saying anything it sound like he ain't cool with the motherfuckers you ain't gonna see him on his next album i'm pretty sure little baby still out here throwing sneak disses in features as recent as friday right they say, have you spoken to those guys at all? He said, I talked to like maybe like two or three of those guys. I talked to them on the phone peacefully on good terms. He says, yeah, peacefully. A lot of people have opinions and comments on your situation. Have you felt that you've gotten a fair shake from people or have you gotten a bad reputation you didn't deserve? Gunner says, I definitely feel like everybody's been misled. And, you know, when you're being misled, you got a choice to follow and make your own decisions. And that's what's being shown right now. You're being a follower 
and you're being neutral to be like, I don't know what their business is or what they really got going on. They say some of those rappers put out songs with lyrics people think are directed toward you. He says, I honestly didn't hear the lyrics. He says, uh, they ask if he, I guess they double down and say, you didn't listen? He says, honestly, I didn't, but I don't listen to other rappers as much unless something catch my attention. He says, just even before, because of my uh, recording process, if I might like a song, I might fuck around and be making a bad bitch song because I was just hearing that. So like, I try not to listen to so many rappers so I can make my own sound. They keep trying to prod to know what he's listening to. They ask him if he listened to hip hop growing up, but not so much today. He says, yeah, I've been tapping into me. So it's been like that. Again, that's where I say, they, do, they don't do a good job with the journalism over here at Double XL. Shout out to Vanessa. I know you've been there for a very long time, but y'all do a terrible job over here. People off the street or people coming straight out of college could do better. But shout out to y'all for being in the culture for so long. Um, They say you did big return shows in New York and L.A. that had huge turnarounds or turnout. Excuse me. A gift and a curse was a big success. And so was Fuck You Mean. How much of that was vindication for you? He says, it's more or less just me trying to get back in that space of creating and being the best artist that my fans know of. That's why it happened, because of them. They came through. Those were the fans before I put out A Gift and a Curse. The fans that went to the New York show and the L.A. show were day one fans. Those are core Gunner fan base. I couldn't have done it without them. So I feel like the music comes after. The foundation has been set. I just got to follow up to keep giving them what they want. Right? Uh, they go on to ask him about the song Bittersweet. They say that was the most recent song you released. People thought you sent some subliminals on there to people who haven't support you, supported you. Anyone you were talking to on that song? He says, uh, yeah, no, because sometimes I talk to myself in my songs. You gonna resonate with songs where I might be like, don't stop, keep it pushing, like I'm talking to myself. So you just gotta pay attention and listen to my words. And you know, it's easy to be misled from certain things till you listen from the horse's mouth. So he says, basically without saying... He's saying, those that know who I'm talking to them, they know I'm talking to them. Sometimes I'm talking to myself, and I'm not here to decode this shit for you. I ain't finna put it in subtitles for you, right? Um, Let me see if there's anything else relevant in this article, in this questionnaire. I don't believe there's anything else relevant in here. I know he has a new album called One of One that's on the way. They do ask him about that. So let me see. He says, this album is still showing growth, showing me growing into a man because I've been more disciplined. I've been tapping into different things. I've been living in a different space. I feel like you'll hear that in the music. Me being creative and tapping with my voice, doing sounds, doing different melodies. I just feel like you're going to feel me evolve. And y'all know Gunna did get highly embraced by the Afrobeats community fresh out. Um... So I wouldn't be surprised if it has some Afrobeats presence on the album just because he's connected with those artists and that fan base. So that may be part of the evolution that he's talking about, you know? So I think that really kind of concludes my interest in this uh, Gunna situation. The fans are there. The people are there. I'm interested to see how this next album is going to perform once he puts it out. Um... And I'm wishing them all the best. You know, we come from the same community. When I first moved to Atlanta, when I was a child, I was like six, seven years old. I lived in College Park. I lived on Old National, right up the street from where Gunner and his family lived. You know what I'm saying? So just out of that, I support anybody coming from my section. You feel me? And for our last subject of the evening, we're going to go ahead and get into this whole Gerard Carmichael situation. He had an interview with The Breakfast Club where he was asked about his white slave master joke from his HBO comedy show. Um, and he tries to explain a little bit about this. I'm going to go ahead and let him explain this. Um, there's been a lot of controversy around the show. There was the whole Tyler, the creator thing about him professing his love or his interest in Tyler as a romantic partner. Tyler basically did everything except explicitly tell him, nah, nigga, I ain't interested. Um, said, I look at you like a brother. That was viral just about a week or so ago. Now we've got this whole white slave master thing because he does date a white man. And he talks about how into books he is. And he reads so many books that he thinks he's teaching him how to read. 
and there's this whole white slave master dynamic between them two. I don't understand that shit. Then there was also this Harriet Tubman shit that he had in the special. I don't watch the show, but I have seen the clips that have uh, come online. I'm going to go ahead and let him try to explain himself because I don't know how you're going to dig yourself up out of this hole, my brother. Uh, best of luck to you on that, though. You you played a clip of my stand up, but it started at the punchline and it, it like completely erased the setup of it. And I really don't like that. Um, it made it seem like I was talking like I'm into some type of race, sexual slavery role play with my mm -hmm. boyfriend, which is untrue. It's mm -hmm. so false. And I expect that type of thing from TMZ because they have no humanity. They don't care about like, the, the people that get hurt when they report these sort of things. But you're a friend. So I really didn't like that. Like, I, like, I know you repeated it in the Neil interview. I, I, I didn't like that. That that was very, very unfair. It was a I joke. I only saw that clip, though. But Yeah, but I, I need you to watch the show. Saw, no, and, saw, and anybody who I've watches it, the show, it's not what then. I said. Yeah, I've it's it so then. false. Mm -hmm. It's so untrue. And I, I don't like that because and... it's like, no, no, well, we'll get into that later. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's a joke it's about untrue. reading. It has nothing to do with my boyfriend. It has nothing uh, uh, like the sex that we have. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. about my boyfriend reading so much. He makes me feel insecure about my level of reading. Mm -hmm. And look, I get it. It, it. Like It's something that people have been running. You you played a clip of no. I want to stick to the joke though. In context, the joke's still not a good joke. Well, that's on you. Listen, yeah, I've been I mean, a professional like, comedian like, for a while. I got still, I got some because you're still saying you're a slave. No, he's a slave that, master. That joke, you and know, the slave master is teaching the slave to read. You know, listen. I'm talking about my own personal insecurity. I'm yeah. an educated person. I'm usually the smartest person in the room. He reads so much, it makes me feel like, oh, do I even know how to read? That joke works if I had a black boyfriend. My boyfriend were black. That joke actually works better if I had a black boyfriend. when you're black and you the slave and the white person is the slave. Listen, master. if you are... And you're I, from North Carolina well, where you look, know the first anti-literacy laws were created in North and South Carolina. Sure, you know sure, sure. But that's not my role as a comedian to start getting into like like literacy laws and stuff like that. You've completely lost that. No, I want to stick to the joke, though. Whoa. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna play more of this, but I want to go ahead and say, you know, Charlemagne is an interesting character, man. Like when it comes to certain people, he knows a lot. You know what I mean? As far as literacy laws and slaves and slavery and all this stuff and stuff. But then for others, he can be completely or act completely like uninformed. He could act completely ignorant. So I think both of y'all are donkeys. You know what I mean? Of the day of the week, perhaps. But he's making very, very sensible, logical points with Jared. And he does, just doesn't want to accept it that he made a joke that didn't go over well. It wasn't well received. It was a poor joke. And, you know, we all make that mistake. But the whole thing is being able to own up to it when some shit just ain't right. I think that's a problem that a lot of people just don't ingest into their personal lives. I wish more of us would. You know, there's a lot of this, I said what I said, I stand on business type of thing, but sometimes remove your ego from the situation and just be like, man, I fucked up and I'll, I'll do better and hopefully I'll give me another chance. I mean, it's not hard to say that. It's not hard to live by that code, but let's see what else he has to say for himself. There see laws and stuff like that. Your boyfriend, he makes me smarter. He makes okay, so this is the joke. Hold on, let me play y'all the actual audio from the joke. I'm not gonna read all them damn books. Like he, he know that. But like the fact that I bought them says I love you. They're like just little monuments to him around my apartment. Just like look at this book from Amazon that I'm never gonna read. <laughs> I sometimes joke to him that like our relationship is like that of like a slave and the master son who like. Teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too, cause he's a good person. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my bird. I think that's hilarious. Yes, sir. Marie Antoinette, sir. I don't know what that is. You know, that's uh, it's a joke. That's for me. Oh boy. I like putting holes in my mouth. You ever do race play? I sometimes joke to him that like. Our relationship is like that of like a slave and the master son who like Yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah brother. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. You said it yourself. I think we've deduced based on his explanation and the actual joke. And unfortunately, you know, 
what I think about this is that joke was playing as the credits were rolling. If y'all would have filled that space of the credits rolling with anything else, y'all wouldn't be in this predicament. Nobody would have anything to say about it. The race play thing still would have been a little bit off. I don't know why you think that's okay, but this isn't the first time that I've heard of this, this thing, this race play thing. I won't say any names, but, um, I know somebody who has made a lot of questionable decisions in life, a young lady. She ended up, I guess, trying to date this white guy or whatever. And he was into that. He was into race play. He was into like, you know, calling her a nigger in a intimate moments, I guess I'll say. And she allowed that shit for a little bit. And yeah, that's it. That didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand how you could. I don't know. I don't know, man. Some people have different kinks, quirks, and standards, morals that they live by. I'm just glad I don't got to deal with that shit in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all I can say. I can't speak to people's psyche. I can't speak to what they go through. I can't speak to none of that shit, man. Um, and someone else who's under fire right now, since we're going to talk about it, is uh, NLE Chopper. You know, he's got that song, Slept Me Out Too, out. If I was a bad bitch, I want to fuck me too or something around or something along those lines. He put out an explanation about the record and um, embracing his... Uh, his self in totality because a lot of people are trying to say that he's gay they're trying to say that he's uh you know trying to basically slow roll his outness or whatever the case may be i don't personally think that's the case with nle i think that he's just trying things i think he's having fun playing with the concept which you know tyler the creator was having fun playing with the concept too for a little bit but that's not my place to impose on him, right? So he comes out and talks about masculinity and all of this stuff. And he also recently came out and thanked the LGBTQ community for um, their support of the record. And, you know, some of them have supported him. Some of them have not. Um, some people feel as though NLE is an abuser and he's getting a rebrand from the LGBTQ community, which I think is a very valid criticism of NLE. Um, some people also say the same thing about Lil Uzi. I agree with that as well, but let's just hear what he has to say about the masculinity thing from the fan base. I promise you, I ain't making that video because I'm offended or I feel some type of way, but, um, man, it's funny how, like, back in the 70s, the 60s, men used to dance, bro, and it was, like, fun. It was... It was, it was happy. Nobody looked at them like they weren't straight or nobody looked at them like they weren't gangsters or nobody looked at them like they was less of a man. But you feel me? During the 70s, the 60s, the 80s, and a little bit of the 90s, a lot of people, you feel me, was dancing and it was culture. Um, towards the 2000s and like 2010s and I feel like I don't know what happened between that time period. I love for someone to come in on it and let me know what happened. But now it seems as if when men dance or when men show themselves having fun, it's less masculine or they may they're not straight or they're not certified G's or some all these different things. Man, my whole my whole motive, my whole thing is bring fun back to music. You feel me? So when you see me doing whatever, they don't mean I'm less of a nigga uh, whoop your ass or I'm less of a nigga uh, shoot you. They don't mean I'm less of that type, man. Because I ain't going to lie, that, that part of me is hidden somewhere as well. But that can come out. But you feel me? Why do we got to bring that out when we know that these these things lead to two places? Ain't there enough niggas dying now? It's enough niggas going to jail? Y'all always want to be gangsters. And then I, I be the one got to pay the funerals. I be the one got to sit by the mama when they crying. Feel me? Y'all ain't tired of that. Y'all ain't ready to have some fun. Y'all ain't y'all ain't seeing all the turmoil they be going on behind all this. Y'all wanna hear murder rap all day shit. Everybody wanna shot a flow from travel. I don't mind giving it to you. But I'ma give it to you with a balance. You feel me? I'ma go here, I'ma be versatile, I'ma give you this, some all this, this, 
Then I might drop a little bit just to let y'all know that I ain't forgot about y'all. But feel me, I'ma always expand my wings and go go to different territories and try different genres, try to do different type of music because at the end of the day, I'm not finna hold myself in a box. And I'm damn sure not finna be put in no box a cell or put in no, a box a casket trying to live all this gangster shit for y'all, for y'all to forget about me and be on the next motherfucker. Because I'm watching a whole lot of that. Die and go to jail, y'all on the next motherfucker. But y'all swear y'all want that gangster shit all day. Man, I got gangster shit going on in real life. I do not have to rap about gangster shit no more. I got gangster shit really going on. This motherfucker really out here dying. This motherfucker really out here going to jail. So I'm, so I'm trying to figure out when did it come to a point when when men have fun, when men want to dance. I can't even lock it into no race. I can't even see this, this, just say black man. But most, but highlighting black men though, for real, because that's where it's really occurring that when when black men started to have fun, what is program job to say that that, 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 that they less of a man or they less of a gangster or they, or they ain't straight males? You feel me? I don't understand that everybody want to call somebody this and that. Man, have some fun, man. Live your life. Be free, man. It ain't about thugging and mugging, clutching up in public all day. We can do that. We can, we can always do that. But now, well, bro, if you go look at how people used to be in the clubs in the 70s, and then you go look in the clubs how we are now, bro, in the 70s, everybody say it's cool. You would not fuck with MC, though. MC, everybody want to in the 70s, motherfuckers was dancing, moving. Black men, and niggas was still getting on your way. MC Hammer, MC Hammer, dancing. Just say black man. He was on real street, nigga. And nobody back then looked at him like he was this or that. And they was a dancing, and he a pressure ass. So don't let shit in come screw, you feel me? But fast forward now, we got niggas all stiff in the club. It's all I can do. Bar. Man, look at you, man. Man, listen, man. Them whole lot of hell fun. You feel me? All that still shit. When it like me come around, she is going, no cow. She don't want to be with your boy. She want to come to a nigga on. Ugh. Make her laugh. Feel me? Then when it's time to get out, like, we on that. What we on? What we doing? What we doing? Fight? What, 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 what? I'm on that too. But until they get to that point, I'm, I'm vibing. I'm all cheesing. Because life good. You would not. What we got a frown for? We can't dance no more. We can't have fun. Black man. It's a crib, black man. We can't have fun no more. Damn. That's how I done got. Life done got like that for y'all. Boy, please, I'm gonna live my life, man. I know what's going on, man. And they leave chopper. And still on the same shit. Wait, what? Same old shit. No cap. Hey, what we got a frown for? All right. So those are words from NLE Chopper, man. Um, I don't disagree with him in this instant, you know. I'm not a fan of this young man's music. I've tried to give him a chance multiple times uh, just on the merits of his music. Never really was for me. You understand? That's just me, though. I feel like it's not that great of a rapper. But he does what he does. He has a fan base that that rocks with him. And outside of that, I don't know too much else about dude. Right? But, yeah, that's what we got there. When it comes to those allegations around uh, NLE Chopper, they say that he had faced allegations of domestic abuse by the mother of his daughter. Um, he conf he said they say even in his tweets, he confirmed that he attempted to shoot her before she got pregnant and was accused by the woman of shooting at a house where his daughter was present. Uh, they say, additionally, NLE Chopper has expressed his strong stance against physical abuse of women, emphasizing that he's never physically assaulted a lady and does not respect those who do. Um, I didn't even really know about that. You know, people were saying that they didn't like the rebrand 
but now I see what they talking about. Um, can't really co-sign no type of shit like that. Uh, they say in a string of since deleted tweets, Chopper got defensive when people began bringing up how he allegedly shot at Mariah's mother's house in 2020 while his daughter Clover was inside. Chopper did not outright deny these allegations, but claimed the incident occurred before she was pregnant. Uh, he says, clearly say before, and those were past actions. That'll never happen again ever in life. I've grown so much. I respect women too much to even up a gun on a lady. Honestly, don't know what he had going on with himself at that time. But yeah, that's pretty pretty much inexcusable. There, I don't give a fuck how many NLE Choppers fans see this video. That shit's inexcusable. If you you go out like that, you went out sad, bro. You down bad. And that's you, you, that's going to stick with you. That's going to be on your badge for life. You understand what I'm saying? He wasn't even on the docket, but uh, it came across my desk that he was saying some things. I wanted to address what he said. I agree with what you're saying. I agree with everything you said about having fun in the club, listening to music, um, you know, having fun with the with the ladies, with the women, this, that, and the third. Uh, niggas being too hard for to have a good time. Niggas end up dead in jail. All of that shit sound good. All that shit is, is good. You know what I mean? I don't understand the reason why you would have to still be gangster in the midst of having fun. You're still trying to prove something to somebody that you, I mean, just the idea that you gangster is something that need not be said. I mean, the average person would or should want to know how to protect themselves or defend themselves if need be, but that doesn't make you a gangster, right? That's a whole different thing. But, you know, we're not here for a college dissertation. We're not here for you know, a big conversation about analyzing him as a human being. I just, you know, I don't agree with the shit you did, but I do agree with the shit you said. And at this moment, that's what we're going to go off of. I'm sure some people in the comments are going to be flaming your ass up and I ain't stopping them because that's they business, you know? Let me know what y'all think of all of this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. It's much better on the inside than outside. It's getting real hot out there. The spring is warming up. You're going to want to get to some AC. You're going to want to get to some cold water, some juice, some ice and shit like that. So go ahead. Come inside. Join the insiders. Kick your shoes off. Relax your feet. Party on down to the J. Nolan beat because I'm finna play Let's Get It and get on up out of here for the evening, man. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Of course, you know we're going to be back with more daily news so don't go nowhere make sure you got your post notifications turned on and i'm finna turn this off all right much love and respect i'll see y'all later peace yeah. king of my city in cul-de-sac uh. coming i swing like soldier rat yeah. leading my people like quarterback but i study this shit i'm an almanac yeah. had to get up and grind knowledge is booming i'm here to apply yeah. came with the chip and the dip it just single the mind we finna do more to survive i need my check yeah. spinning the block for the gouda we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama I'm full of your breast yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me, uh -huh. all of a sudden they tell me they proud of me what? I been dropping these haters like calories, uh -huh. cross my mind I came back with some batteries Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer Wanna catch my bad one fumble, I done came too far to be humble